Prof, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, and um, I'm happy to be on your show. I'm not happy to read what you have put in your report, though. What, it looks very bleak, the state of the media, isn't it? What you found? Um, yes, I can see why some of the report does not make for happy reading. There are parts of the report that point to the centrality of media in supporting democracy in Ghana, and, uh, and the good news is that journalists are aware of those rules. They understand those rules. But there's a big but. Are they able to play the rules properly? If not, why not? And part of the why not is the conditions in which they have to work. And that's the part that depresses you, I suspect, and that depresses me as well. Now, I've seen highlights around, and need look, looking through... The remuneration for journalists or the lack thereof appears to be a critical issue. Recount for us what you found in this report. Yes. Um, I, 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 I was very surprised uh, uh, at how low. I knew anecdotally that journalists did not have good working conditions. What I didn't know was how bad their working conditions are. So, for example, the report showed that journalists were poorly paid, sometimes not paid regularly, and in some instances, not paid at all. They couldn't rely on, on pay. So, if you get a journalist who is paid as low as 500 Ghana cities a month, that's absolutely shocking. Um, but, it's between 500 and 1,000. Now, a, a lot more were paid something like 1,000. That, to me, is also very shocking because unskilled workers in Ghana uh, uh, do earn 1,000, perhaps even more. Not perhaps, I know, even more. So to have skilled workers, people who have first degrees, sometimes even second degrees, uh, being paid, such poor wages is, is, is really uh, outrageous. Um, we do know that it's not all journalists who are that poorly paid. So there's a big disparity. There are journalists who are paid very well, especially those that are headhunted and recruited uh, to bring audiences uh, to their stations or their workplaces. But, uh, but averagely, too many journalists don't get paid well. The other part of the story that makes me um, have, okay, feel some sort of despair is that as if the journalists not being paid is not bad enough, the media houses themselves are not financially viable, which means that it is not something that is going to be sorted out anytime soon. The issue would continue because if the media house you work for is not financially viable, then you should not expect any pay. Yes, I mean, that's part of the problem. It's related. I, I want to add also, it's not just being paid, but also other conditions that people in formal employ come to expect. For example, health care. You know, very few offer health care. Um, and, you know, journalism is, 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 is tough sometimes, particularly if you go on demonstrations or you do investigative journalism journalism and all of that, and they don't have enough protection at all. But coming back to the financial viability, which was a chapter also uh, in the report, because the report had working conditions, a chapter, but also financial viability, safety for journalists as well. And with the financial viability, we do know that all over the world, legacy media is under stress. Some have weathered the storm much better. And part of the reason that legacy media, which uh, uh, media companies like yours um, are is because um, of the competition from online social media and the fact that advertising revenue is moving from uh, traditional media to online media. That's one. But two also is that the media space, the broadcast media space in particular, 
it's so crowded. So in Accra, for example, you have something like 56 radio stations. Now, all of these 56 radio stations are going to be competing for advertising uh, uh, CDs in order to survive because that's how traditionally media is funded through advertisement. In some markets, I think in Ashanti, it's even worse. It's 63 or something like that. You know, uh, Western region is equally, almost 50, equally crowded, you see. And so, 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 so that's part of the pro problem. So they are, the report says that at best, they are only breaking even. And so it's a vicious circle. They don't make enough money. They can't pay their journalists well. They can't offer them a, a good working conditions. And then the journalists can't, and they don't have the resources. It's not just that the journalists don't get paid well, but the, but the, the organizations don't put resources to doing quality work. It costs money to do an investigative piece. It costs money to do a good documentary. It costs money to equip the newsroom uh, in, in today's world of technology in order that journalists can work properly. And, and those are all part of the issue. And today we launched the Media Development Indicators, UNESCO. And again, similar findings uh, showed in that report and more. Prof, let's leave it here for now and hope that things get better soon. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you for having me. But I think that I want to urge journalists to mount advocacy campaigns themselves so that they are. Uh, owners and managers treat them much better than they are being treated right now.